Hello everyone and welcome back to Send It's Weather channel. I've got a bit of an interesting one for you today, especially at the start of this video, so don't skip ahead. This might be encouraging for um, future signs, possibly even into the winter season. Now of course, obviously I'm looking a long way off, and we have to consider the current conditions. So as we all know, things have definitely cooled down here in the UK, and they're going to continue to cool down. Obviously in the South East it's been relatively mild but further northwards it's definitely cooled down and also into next week as you'll see in a minute temperatures are expected to drop quite significantly um, there might even be the risk of a few early night frosts and something which we have to look to first is this so i've brought up the um, sea surface temperature anomalies for the week to the 16th so this was yesterday this is the sea surface temperatures across the entire world yesterday what we're focusing on is the North Atlantic. Now, something which you might have picked up on is this. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking like this, but yeah, it's quite interesting. You can see this cooler ocean waters just out to our west, which is kind of the Atlantic Sea track, where our areas of low pressure track across the UK, and they come from the Atlantic. Now, as you can see, there the blues indicate the cooler temperatures, and the reds and oranges indicate the warmer temperatures. Now, this pattern is indicated actually looking very similar to a tripole winter, which is where you see warm temperatures towards the south of Greenland um, and cooler temperatures in between these points. So as you can see, warmer temperatures over Spain and then cooler temperatures within the midst of the North Atlantic. And that is very encouraging, actually, um, for a cold winter. And if you are wondering... Um, if you look back in the archive as to when we actually saw a very interesting <laughs> winter with um, a, a tripole set up, like warm, cool, warm, you look back to 0910. And if you know what winter 0910 happened, or if you know what happened during that winter, then it could be a good one. Of course, it's just looking at sea surface temperatures, but it's not just that. Also, got to look at cool Septembers. It's going to cool down next week. Could that bring the CET down towards average? There's going to be some cold nights some cold days as well cold daytime temperatures particularly in the north it could bring down those temperatures if we get an easterly northeaster wind that could also bring the temperatures down so there's a lot of factors at play here but this is just one of them which could have a big importance now of course we know it's a, it could be a la nina year we're not sure how strong it's going to be it's going to be a weak la nina and mm, leaning towards enso neutral or if it's going to be quite a strong la nina but that could be good signs for the start of the winter and obviously quite a mild end to the winter but again we'll have to see what happens but i just thought it was something of interest to look at to start with let me know what you think in the comments about is it a good sign it's a bad sign let me know so we're going to move on then by looking at the max temperatures for the next five days from the ukv run um, and if you enjoyed today's video consider leaving a like and subscribing we are 11 subscribers away from 2000 so it's jumped up a bit from yesterday I do appreciate all of your continued support. So I did say we're going to cool down, so let's have a look. So, max temperatures at 4pm today reached around 20 for central Britain. But as we move into tomorrow, you see it is definitely cooling down in the north, still hanging on to that milder air in the far south and southeast. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, as we go into the afternoon, Thursday afternoon, temperatures reaching 20 to 23 degrees in that southeastern corner. Obviously cooler as you head north and west. But as we move in to Friday, you can see temperatures. Yeah, they are still pretty mild in the southeast, but they are definitely cooler in this northwestern flank. But as we move into the weekend, you will definitely see a noticeable change in these charts. Moving into Friday, you can see the temperatures definitely dropping for Scotland and Northern England. Obviously still meaning relatively mild further southwards, central Britain, southeastern England, Lincolnshire. But into Saturday, you can see that the dome of milder air is beginning to retreat further southwards as we see more of a, <laughs> of a, of a northerly wind takeover. Now, looking to Sunday, look at that. Temperatures widely into single figures, uh, besides in the far southeast, and reaching highs of 13 to 16 degrees in isolated spots. Uh, further north was actually quite chilly, 6 to 9 degrees. Um, so definitely a change indicate there. Into Monday, even signs for um, northern Scotland of the Scottish Glen, Scottish Mountains, of some possible night frosts. So that's um, that's a rare visitor. 
Um, obviously not as rare as you think, obviously it does happen most years, probably around this time of year, but it could be more widespread than this. The UKV does a very poor job at predicting where we could see frosts and things like that. But if we look on to Monday afternoon, highs of 13 to 15 degrees for central southern Britain, it's nothing too spectacular. Maybe a maximum in the far south east, such as like Herne Bay or uh, Brighton, for example, maybe 17 or 18 degrees, possibly. But you can definitely see that cooling trend taking over for much of the UK and all the milder temperatures have been shoved to our southeast. Definitely can see that split. So a lot to play for is the trend. Um, if we look at the diagrams um, for London, I'm not sure why it's on the snow one. <laughs> Don't ask why. Um, then I'm going to move that down there. Then you can see, whoopsie daisies, I'm going to zoom that in. <laughs> Um, that the trend is around to slightly above average at the moment, definitely a much above average for the London area, but you can see that drop taking place between the 21st of September out to around the 1st of October really, about 10 days of cooler conditions, and if you look at the red uh, line which is the long term average, you can see we're actually below that line quite significantly. And it's definitely going to feel cooler, even a few of the runs getting down to that minus 3 line. Don't imagine it's going to get down to that, especially in the south, but it definitely will have a bit more of a cooler feel um, to the conditions. If you look at the 2 metre temperatures shown from the GFS runs, you can see they are very similar to what the UKV was showing, dropping down to around 15, 16 degrees, and slowly but surely recovering into the longer term. But of course, as you go beyond that, uncertainty begins to increase. And if you look at the precipitation for London, for example, it's relatively low. There's a few rain spikes over the weekend, but then beyond, it's pretty dry. Heading further northwards to Aberdeen, obviously those temperatures are much reduced because they're further northwards. Um, so highs of 10 degrees on some of these days, which is pretty chilly for the time of year. Precipitation-wise, again, pretty not too much going on, really. It is definitely drier than was indicated only a few months ago, so... <laughs> definitely been a bit of a bit of a change so yeah <laughs> we'll have to just see you remember a, a cooler september is indicative of a higher chance than normal of a better um, chance of a colder start to winter I've, i always say that so we'll have to see how that plays out also october is going to be a dry month i'm telling you now october will be a dry month it usually follows a wetter september stuff it let's throw winter in here <laughs> so um, let's have a look then why not at uh, the um the latest cfs run to see what it's showing i'm going to skip to the start of december because why not you know just to make the video a bit longer and also to make it feel a bit fuller as well as soon as we talked a little bit about the sea surface temperatures First of December, would you look at that? High pressure to the south, low pressure to the north and west. And we're in a typical west southwesterly wind, very typical for the UK. Moving on that, we do see high pressure ridging further northwards, um, out to our west, just about, trying to bring down cooler northerly winds, but then the high pressure kind of sits over the top of the country, going to our north, and actually that's going to bring in an a easterly wind, so could have a chill to it, especially in the south, some overnight frost possible. Then the high pressure begins to move, and here we go. It begins to move just out to our west of the UK into the second week of December, but then into the... Um, by the 12th December, high pressure properly ridging to our north, towards Greenland, splitting off from the south from Spain, where it was originally positioned. And then we bring down these cooler northerly winds again. Colder northerly winds, you can see the minus 5 line moving in. But a battleground takes place into the second week. And we've got low pressure trying to move in from the west, um, which is going to be trying to bring back unsettled conditions from the west. And it obviously does win out because it normally does. <laughs> but um, high pressure remaining strongly to the south, low pressures remaining firmly to the north. And it looks pretty mild, to be honest. Then does turn cooler into the, those final, day, <laughs> final days of um, December in this run. Um, trying to turn cooler, but doesn't really make too much of it. Um, we're always on the periphery of it, <laughs> we stay on the dry side, and then that happened at Christmas, for example, it would be a pretty um, disappointing one <laughs> if, you're, if you're coldy, um, not too much to say there, but as we go into um, January, high pressure really taking over um, and tr trying to build, bringing them mild south, 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 bleh, 
my old self, southwesterly winds. Into the start of Jan, things turn more unsettled again. For high pressure ridges back in. High pressure ridges back in again and again and again. <laughs> Do see a bit of a colder plunge there in at the end of Jan, if it came off. High pressure ridging out to the west a little bit. Well, push the east winds in from a colder northerly direction, bringing showers wintry in the north and the east with that. But then high pressure again trying to take over, but areas of low pressure are too strong in the Atlantic. Look how strong the polar vortex is on this run. Wow. Um, not very encouraging at all if you wanted to call. But then there you go. Look at the end of the run. Bit of a beast from the east, possibly. <laughs> the end of Feb. Some colder air position to our east and we properly bring it in. High pressure's really getting going to our north and east there. And we're bringing a pretty cold easterly wind. And the minus 10 lines through the country. It's looking pretty chilly there at the end. This is looking pretty interesting. High pressure retrogressing to our north. We're bringing down a cold north, northeasterly wind. We've got areas of low pressure trying to push in as well from the south. And that is a snowmaker there. Uh, that would be bringing in copious amounts of snow, particularly to the south there. If that came off, look at that. Got the cold air firmly over the UK. Another low trying to move in. But eventually the milder air does win out. But not too mild until the final frames when we do properly shove away that cold air into the start of March. So that runs a bit of a bit of a false flat on its face, isn't it, really? Compared to what we've seen previously from the CFS runs. Been really exciting. Only a little bit better at the end of the run, but you know, it's so far away, I won't worry about it. It's just a bit of fun at the end of the video. So yeah, thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy it, con continue to leave a like and subscribe. We've got some big plan for 2,000 subscribers and we're getting really close. So show us your support by doing all those things and leaving a hype. Don't know what it means, but it means something. It might help out the video a bit. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye, bro.